everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, uh, sh you know, presenting a very, actually now that I look at the size of all the projects happening here, it's a small project but very special to us. And it is in tune with Swachh Bharat, so we are very proud of the impact that it has made. Um, essentially, we have two large programs, which is the Bali Tobacco Farmers Program and the Ongol Women Tobacco Graders Program. They are very linked to our business, uh, to our industry. And what we are trying to do is ensure that there is sustainable livelihood for the people associated with the industry. So I will only take you through one project. Um, uh, <coughs> I don't want to take up much time. Uh, this is the Burley Tobacco Women's Program. And um, I will uh, essentially have to give you a small picture of what the past was. So this uh, program started around in 2013 because there were a lot of uh, reports coming in from our leave division. Uh, labor problem, uh, there is constant labor problem, there is conflict, uh, there are not enough people coming in, it was hitting the productivity, the, uh, we were not meeting our targets and we kept hearing labor problem, labor problem and um, uh, so as usual CSR team came in much later so there was HR was uh, dealing with it and leave division and uh, by that time we had already started putting our strategic uh, programs in place and we knew that anybody who's a stakeholder or who's associated will be uh, working with them. So when we were called in, first of all we see that actually the labor were women. Uh, somehow in this whole labor problem, labor problem, uh, gender got uh, missed and I feel that would have been an important part uh, to mention the gender. So if, this photo is telling because this is one of the earliest photographs we took when we went to a uh, tobacco grading center. Uh, these are women who essentially are uh, completely marginalized women. They are mostly from SCST, um, uh, the scheduled caste and tribes. And what they do is they have the expertise of uh, putting the leaves in uh, different uh, grades, right? They would come here and uh, uh, what we hear is that there's a lot of conflict and there are fights happening and everything. And when we started talking to them, here is the other picture that I'll have to share with you. So what we hear is here's this woman who wakes up very early in the morning and she rushes to the fields first to you know uh, relieve herself uh, answer the nature's call rushes back she makes food for her husband for her children send them off packs mostly plain rice and pickles for herself then she comes running to work where there's a contractor who chooses the women who will work or not work i mean he has a certain number that he has to take these women then once they start working uh, there, are, there, are, there were no toilets here, there was no drinking water, they were carrying, uh, you know, their tap water in uh, large uh, bottles, the Coke bottles and Sprite bottles. And um, they would stay here the whole day with a supervisor who would be screaming and yelling at them pretty much like cattle. Like, you have to get the work done and this has to be... So, funnily enough, that was, a, of course, not helping the productivity. And the other thing was that every time the women had to relieve themselves, they would have to step out of the grading center and relieve themselves in the field, which meant that there was a constant smell of urine somehow floating in, in their work area. During their periods, they had to either drop work or go back half day or take time out to go back home and come back. They didn't have any personal space to even change uh, within uh, in the working area. So. Um, that's when we did a need assessment and we all imagined wages are going to be a problem because that's what we kept hearing. They want, they will want 5 rupees more, they will want this much money more. They are minimum wage workers. And we were as surprised as anybody else because what the women were asking is just some personal space to go and uh, you know use the washroom. They wanted drinking water because it was difficult for them to use the tap water plus Andhra has a problem of uh, fluoride contamination. So these women had constant health problems and they wanted clean working areas, uh, obviously, and this is a similar thing they wanted in their community also. And that is the reason why I'm sharing this, because willy-nilly, WASH became the focus of this entire project, while we were actually trying to work it around sustainable livelihood and look at their uh, you know, other needs. So um, we kept it simple. We wanted to make sure that they were happy at the work uh, they were doing and uh, we wanted to create a better living standards. We started with three grading centers and four villages. So here's uh, mostly pictures. Uh, you can see the change. We, first thing we did was clean up the area. We painted the place, we cleaned it up, we um, you know, uh, uh, made the women. Uh, the other important thing we did was we removed the male supervisor and trained these women to become supervisors themselves. That was the first thing we did and uh, I, 
it's an immediate change. I mean, uh, with no offense to men, it was an immediate change on how they were handling the women in the first place. So we put up uh, RO plant here for uh, water. The, we created uh, toilets. And uh, I remember all the worries from the grading center uh, owners and our company too, that who's going to clean these toilets? These toilets will stay more. But you'll not believe it's five years now and these toilets are really clean and almost new because the women do it themselves. We cleaned up the area where they used to, you know, urinate uh, and landscaped it for them to sit. And we uh, made sure that they had safety kits for, uh, you know, dealing with tobacco leaves. Uh, we started health camps because we realized that they were in poor health. And along with health camps, we made sure they had kitchen gardens and poultry uh, so that they had uh, better food to eat. And um, the other thing was that a lot of the women said that we don't want our children to be following in the same footsteps. We would want them to study further. So we started a scholarship system. Uh, within the grading center. Uh, these were the community initiatives. So when we went to their uh, home place, they obviously wanted toilets at their homes too. So we had to visit the community and we started uh, looking at toilets. And by this time, the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan had started to become a very popular catchword. So we were happy that, you know, the need, actually it was the need of the country. It's the need of the people, it's the need of the women. Uh, uh, it's important. Uh, we created community ROs, uh, we pulled uh, water uh, extensions to the SCST area because in these villages, <coughs> the main village and SCST area actually falls apart. Uh, they are all of the same villages but they have separate primary schools, they have separate, <coughs> they have separate community areas and the SCST area you usually, usually would have to you know, walk all the way to the main village to pick up water. So we pulled pipes for them, these are the infrastructure work we did, we removed all stagnant water because uh, obviously those were causing diseases also. We created drainage um, and uh, we started uh, waste management but uh, obviously these are very happy pictures but the truth is that it was a nightmare because frankly we do it in the villages and after that how it goes ahead and goes into the big system we have no idea. We just do it within, uh, we are doing it as best practices mostly. So um, we'll not be able to share the bigger picture because that's a challenge. Uh, really, we haven't been able to make an impact in the bigger thing. It's only within the village. The women have divided themselves into wards and they clean up their own areas. Uh, we did the infrastructure of school. That's because we wanted the children to stay in uh, school because uh, children was one of their needs. They wanted education. So we gave out uh, various uh, play and school materials. We did up the Anganwaris, painted it, created land, uh, landscape, playground, and built toilets for boys and girls in all the primary schools and the Anganwari. Now, this is, this is the one story that uh, is a big win for us. So out of the four villages, Edugunla Padu had a woman sarpanch, Shobarani. She was, uh, why it is uh, important to mention her, because not only was she a woman leader, secondly, she is also an uh, SE woman. And she had so many ideas that this village work was possible only because she took interest. She was the one who pushed the government to give the sanctions for the toilets. She was the one who had ideas on what all we could do, which are the areas we'll work in. She wanted her primary schools to be done. So we started working in this village. And today, we are very happy to say that Edugunla Padu is the first village that we have has been declared uh, ODF by the government. The local mandal officer has also declared it. And we have 100% toilets for all the households. There are toilets in the primary school. There are toilets. Uh, and that's the other thing. Why I put it here specifically is, so this is the learning where we built all the toilets and we were so happy and proud with ourselves, patting ourselves on the back. And we did the first impact. And we see the percentage was, forget 100%, forget 90%, forget 50%. It has reached some 60, 70%. And we fell off our chair. What happened? There are, everybody has a toilet and the impact study says that the toilets are not being used. But you see what we realized is that we were so busy speaking to the women who were showing such, you know, receptive attitude and initiative in using the toilets in their workplace and their home, they forgot the men. And the men in the morning, because the families are large, uh, they would see a lot of crowd or children going and getting ready, women getting ready. So they just go to the farm. So when they were going as laborers, they would just defecate and urinate in the uh, open. And um, since then, it's been five years, we're continuing with the awareness. And it's really hard. The moment we uh, ease, ease up, it uh, goes back into the old degrees again. Uh, we have, we fully, uh, this village has no open drainage, any, uh, not open, as in no op uh, uh, 
sewage collection or water collection, uh, stagnant water anywhere. We are doing regular health camps to ensure that the health, uh, we can track what is the health of the women and the men. Uh, there is water connection, there is wet and dry garbage management and um, the women are in wards which they do with themselves. The school is entirely renovated, the Anganwari is renovated, the primary health care has been renovated. We are doing tree plantation uh, and uh, SAG and w, uh, the Village Development Society has been created and it has a skill center for uh, young women who have dropped out who are not in tobacco grading but would like to continue doing something else. So these are happy pictures because uh, this was school completely built and this is one of the families which had a very large family and we built many toilets for them. Now here, uh, uh, when I saw, I heard Sir speaking and that is really the truth that uh, we have no idea what's going to happen in three years, four years time when the tanks are getting filled. Um, also, uh, we, we, we have, the good thing is that we do not make these toilets free for uh, the villages. We are very particular about getting the sanction done and then we put in added money to make the toilet and yeah. we take a little bit of thousand rupees from the villagers because then they have owners. We have seen that in the beginning when we were making it free for them and uh, they had no regards and they would just leave it locked or have some of the other reason not to use the toilet. So that's one thing we have moved away. It's slow business now uh, because we want to get the sanction but we feel it's, it's working better uh, by not just creating the toilet and then waiting for the money. So there is a lot of, these are from the impact study, but uh, what I think is how a corporate and a community both benefit from it is that we have higher productivity and there has been zero conflict now. In this area where women used to be screaming and the men used to be screaming, now if we go there's actually just a ordinary place, you know, like you've entered. And now we don't have to go by a contractor, so women are pretty much coming on their own and they are regulars now. So because they know they get the benefit if they stay with a, a, a grading center that is associated with GPI, they have pretty much stayed even. But here's the thing that I wanted to share because happy pictures don't say anything. Um, this is what I shared, sanction of the government fund is really painful uh, to get and I think it uh, also slows down the pace that we could do our work with uh, as a corporate. Um, Behavior change is our biggest challenge. Uh, at no point can we sit back and say, let's be done with this village. It's been five years and we've not been able to move. So, um, then we make these toilets and we are giving them uh, ROs and all of that, but actually in the homes, there is no piped water access is not there. You know, bigger infrastructure, there's no sewage system. So it makes no point for a corporate to build one drainage system here or one something there, because it only keeps, uh, it's actually a very small way to look at the bigger picture and obviously waste management is very rudimentary. We are just doing it as best practices. We are trying but we cannot claim any wins for it and that is our program. Thank you. I, I just uh, you can visit you I, I just wanted one yes. thing I just want to tell that you know there is a process uh, for any industry I think you know that uh, you know environmental impact management <coughs> project. You know, and you have to monitoring regulation, you have to notify to the state pollution control board and a report go every month, uh, how is your labor camp and other yes. things, and all those things. And you know, most of the companies, corporates in, the, in India, I look at, compared to, you know, US or Europe, the procurement process when you procure from something from your vendors, uh, you do not really know the vendor is using uh, the laborers, uh, with the child laborers, uh, the work environment and all. Instead of you do those things, you know, like which he did, it should be the part of the contractor whoever is supplying the leaves. Yes. I, th I think the workplace uh, improvement and a better environment, which is part of your uh, study, which is supposed to be not done by you, or done by you, supposed to be done by the contractor, because then he said, if you have these, these things, I'm ready to procure from you. Yes, sir. You so know? you are right, because we have a larger program called Sustainable Tobacco Production that is there yeah. within our company, where the leaf division the operations and CSR, they all fall under it doing various elements of it. So, um, for example, our uh, manufacturing units have uh, social accountability. They will not procure from a vendor who is not meeting certain norms. 
the leave division has uh, uh, the program which has got uh, GAP, which is good agricultural practices and agricultural labor practices in place, and child labor and those elements come under it. So we work very closely with the leave division to ensure those elements are not, uh, <coughs> we take care of. You're right that we have to put the onus, a lot of responsibility on the vendors. But in the areas where it's absolutely not possible, uh, you know, yeah. because the tobacco grading center just wouldn't take any risk. These are small units who have opened on their own, it's like sheds. So if we are to take uh, produce, uh, to take material from them, this is something we had to step in. Yeah. Whereas with the early tobacco farmers, we sort of work almost directly with them to ensure that uh, yeah. all the policies are in place. I think that is good uh, for initial hand holding sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. But certainly uh, with your social accountability policy and framework is working and in place, probably in the longer run you would like to integrate it, uh, those requirements to your activity. So this thing will be taken care uh, through a uh, supply management system. Yeah. Yes. So that goes in a long way for the supply. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.